today i want to explain you the combined loading and its stresses i have distributed this chapter in a different two three parts myself anirvan mitra mechanical engineering department mes college of engineering wadia college campus the first before starting the combined loading you just try to understand what are the different type of the stresses till date we learn it in that strength of material or solid mechanic subjects and then when this type of the stresses is applied and then if it is an applied then how to find out what is the formula to find out this type of the stresses this concept actually required whatever you learn it till date all that formula all the concept required in this chapter which is called the combined loading and the stresses so basically there is in two type of the stresses one is called the normal stresses other one is called the shear type of the stresses normal stresses again distributed into that three type first one is tensile stresses so the formula is that force divided by area you can understand that's a brake lever if you apply the brake lever then the brake wire is a pulled off so due to this pulled off there is a tensile stresses is produced on the wire then the compressive stresses it will again the same formula force divided by the cross section area that greatest example is that shoe heel you can understand with this two figure one is the pointed type of the heel where the area is less naturally stress produced in the pointed heel is more then the last one is the bending stresses that is that using the flexural formula m into y divided by i that example is the seesaw so there is some bending moment is applied due to this one that uh, seesaw is bent it and the bending stresses are produced on that so these are the three basic uh, normal type of the stresses now if you go to the shear type of the stresses the first one is called the direct average type of the shear which is the tau d is equal to p divided by the area you can understand there is an uh, some knuckle joint i'm just this is that example of the knuckle joint and if you apply the sum of the forces if you apply some of the forces on this 2i point then actually the stresses produced in this forces stresses produced here as well as here in this diagram you can understand it is coming here and here so there is a double shear takes place in this cases and area what area we are talking about it will again the cross section area actually we are telling about this area only this is the circular area which is the pi by 4d square only now next type of the shear stress is the torsional type of the shear stress if you apply the torque in any component then the torsional shear stress is produced the formula is the t into r divided by the j j is the polar moment of inertia example is the screw driver we are applying the torque so twisting moment so here in the case of a screw driver we are uh, the torsional stresses is produced then the last one is called the transverse type of the shear stress there is some basic difference between that uh, average shear stress and the transverse type of shear stress just try to explain you here in case of a transverse shear stresses the load is applied on the perpendicular directions this is the directions of the load but the stresses is not on this plane in case of a direct shear stresses the force applied on the stresses applied in the same line of axis it will be same line of axis but here the load applied here but the stresses produced in the perpendicular to the load apply that's why it is called the transverse type of the shear stresses which is normally applied in any beam cantilever beam or or the uh, uh, simply supported beam also and in case of a transverse loading we have already studied that one also the stresses transverse stresses not uh, uniform over the cross section area on the top and bottom it is always the zero and on the neutral axis that will be the maximum one only so that is called the transverse stresses at a point as it is in a, a different point it will be the different stresses is produced so these are basically six type of the stresses three normal type tensile compressive bending basically bending is also the combination of the tensile and that normal if you bend this uh, pane in this way then the outer surface is in coming in tension and the inner surface is coming in compression so bending is a basically tensile and compressive and that shear stress is having the three type actually there is not a three type actually basically it will be two type one is the torsional other one is the shear stress that's called the direct shear stress direct stress is in transverse direction is called the transverse shear stress 
so these are the basic type of the stresses what we already learn it also okay now how to combine the stresses if the different type of the stresses what we have checked it now in the last slide if it is coming in any component in combinations then how to combine that stresses so the case one if only normal type of the stresses are applied what are the different normal type of the stresses that will be sigma t sigma c sigma b if a component is having this type of the stresses only then how to combine it will by the algebraic sum only so the sigma n is basically equal to sigma t or sigma c whatever it is or plus minus of the sigma b so any normal type of stresses is coming it will be either at or minus depending upon the nature of the stresses we know that the tensile is called the positive stresses and compressive is called the negative type of the stresses next case two if only shear type of the stresses is applied torsional and transverse type of the shear stresses is applied then how to combine it again the resultant shear stresses is the algebraic summations of the two type of the shear stresses okay it could be again plus minus according to the sign conventions of the shear stresses okay but in the case three if a component having normal as well as the shear stresses then how to combine this so for that one only we have to apply the maximum principal stresses theory i think you know the formula maximum principal stress theory is this this is a sigma x is along the x axis sigma y is along the y axis and using this formula we can find out the sigma 1 or sigma max sigma mean or sigma 2 using this if this answer is coming positive then that is called the tensile type of the nature if it is coming negative then it will be compressive nature okay but this type of the shear stress is normally applied on a principal plane okay you can understand this is the element diagram sigma x is along the x axis sigma y is along the y axis and the tau is coming on the all the plane actually then the maximum shear stress applied on the principal plane so this plane basically is called the principal plane this is called the principal plane principal plane okay so uh, uh, in case of a principal plane normal stresses is produced but there is an another type of combination of loading which we can find out if that all the type of the uh, stresses is applied then we can also find out the maximum shear stresses that is on the maximum shear plane this is the formula and uh, according to this element diagram this plane is called that maximum shear plane so on the maximum shear plane tau max is applied where basically there is no normal stresses is produced so these are the rules to combine or to find out the resultant effect i again summarize the thing if only normal stress is applied algebraic sum or only shear stress is applied algebraic sum according to the sign conventions but if normal and shear stress is applied then we have to use the either maximum principal stress theory or maximum shear stress theory i think you understood this much portion this is the very basics to start the combined stress chapter now another important is the sign conventions of the all the type of the stresses i am basically using that igor spipoverb mechanics of solid books as a reference for this uh, one there is a many books also as per that some of the books is having uh, some different sign conventions so any sign convention is a perfect one if you use it properly i am using here the igor spipoverb direction sign conventions of that one so in case of a normal stresses tension is positive compression is negative in case of a tau that is an uh, shear stresses anti clockwise is positive clockwise is negative but this anti clockwise and clockwise you have to check it only on the sigma x plane sigma x plane means that is a vertical plane i explain it in that element diagram so i i just put it on the one case one in the case one this is my this is my x axis and this one is my y axis so along the x it will come in the tensile direction so i think this will be positive along y it will be towards the body i think this will be compressive type negative now the most important thing the sigma xy you can see it in this plane it will anti clockwise direction but in this plane it will be clockwise direction it will be clockwise direction and here it will be anti clockwise direction then how to check it anti clockwise is called positive clockwise is called negative not only anti clockwise clockwise 
we have to only check on the sigma x plane and the sigma x plane is called the plane the plane which is perpendicular to x axis x axis so that's why it is all the time is the vertical plane all the time it will be the vertical plane only so just check the directions of the tau on the vertical plane i think this is in anti clockwise direction this is in anti clockwise directions anti clockwise directions that's why it is coming the tau is coming here in this case is the positive one in this case it is coming the positive one just check the answer of this sigma x positive sigma y negative tau xy is positive axis now can you please tell me now what is the sign convention of this i just give you some times to understand or just to check it i think you are perfectly right sigma x is coming negative as it is in compression sigma y is coming tension positive at is in tension and on the x plane tau xy is rotating in clockwise direction that's why it is coming the negative signature that's a very important concept so first three slide what i explained you we had already studied now based on this study only we can solve the problem of the combined loading and the stresses due to that real life example of the combined loading you just checked it there is a different example i gave it to you figure number 1 it's a beam one point load is applied on this it's in one rope way and that uh, that uh, lever or you can say the connecting link of the rope way and the wire is uh, drawn here in the figure 2 so what are the different type of the stresses produced the propeller shaft of that helicopter then engine uh, housing block mover actually you can say it will be just carrying that engine actually in that soft load then that cycle pedal then any name plate or sign board then it's a one lever of the different type of the load is applied p1 and p2 on this one so from all this six figure i think you can understand what are the different type of the combined loading is applied in these cases okay one by one we just try to uh, explain you what are the different type of the stresses produced in case of a beam due to this load is applied due to this load is applied the beam is a bending so i think there is in some sigma b on that one as well as due to this load there is a some stresses produced in the perpendicular directions of the transverse directions so there is a some trans, uh, transverse shear load is applied on this one so you can understand that here sigma v and the tau tv transverse type of loading in second cases in that figure number 2 in the rope way link we have to find out the stresses produced at this point at this sections so i think there is some w applied on this so this one is coming some pulling forces so it will be sigma t on this as well as it could be bend also so due to this applied load it could be bend in this nature also it could be bend in this nature also so there is an bending stresses also so you can check it it will be sigma t and sigma b now in case of a third figure in the propeller shaft propeller shaft means it will be on this shaft i am just talking about this shaft only where the some thrust load is applied okay to lift the helicopter in this directions so due to this i think there some sigma t is applied on the shaft as well as due to this torque there is some rotation so due to this torque there is some tau t is applied so this is a sigma t and the tau t is applied in this case okay now student you please understand that other one also you just checked it at the end of this presentation i give you that example of this one remember all this uh, all these things again return back to your uh, this slide and try to find out the what are the different type of the stresses produced in that figure number 4 5 6 7 okay in the next part i will first give you that answer of this thing uh, till that this is the homework to you okay thank you